Hey everyone, welcome to Archland. We have here a build guide for you. This is for Jin. We're gonna start off with um, the usual stuff, um, strengths and weakness, and moving towards my final thoughts. And for his strengths, there are a lot, guys. Um, as you can see here, most of them are ranked S and A. So HP, physical, physical attack, physical defense, focus the, he has a lot of upside actually he he is built well um there 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 are actually a few weaknesses to his kit one of those actually is um his magic defense so be careful with Jin in terms of facing off magic users he's gonna be needing a lot of help in that area so as for that is his strength and his weakness and we're going to his unique passive here so unique passive is the sword of the silver dragon so when attack trigger first strike without a limit per turn so when above 50 percent hp increase physical attack by either 8 10 12 15 percent and first strike damage is increased by 20 23 26 30 percent and it's ranged by one so not only that does he have um uh first strike it increases in damage when his hp is above 50. that is why we'll go to the the build later why you should need to make sure that his hp is 50. and also the range also increases so he not only does he um first strike um enemies that within one tile of him and it, it extends to two tiles from him so again he is uh, that is his core basically in terms of uh first strike and let is let us move on to his traits okay this is where it gets exciting because um the build for Jin uh is going to be only one um i'm gonna suggest only one let's start first with um, um the top row you have the top or the bottom row to prioritize we'll start first with the top row so the top row is this is giving enemy slow then the next one here is going to be distortion so distortion is active skill range is going to be minus one so that's a you know th that lessens the, the range of your enemies and lasts for two turns um a bit underwhelming um and um let's go to the bottom row and why i say underwhelming because for the bottom row um this is outright damage okay so damage to a single target but the most important skill that you will be needing why you are going with the bottom row now i'm telling you to go with the bottom row is this one this passive so you won't be needing this passive here the express because this one is mobility plus one this is nice but you would need the other passive to be equipped so eventually you won't be equipping this one so this one this um passive here is uh, when above uh 50 percent hp increase damage by 15 percent and ignore dodge take note of that so this uh, adds to his first strike ability again he needs to be 50 percent hp and up um ignore dodge so for for he has a special you know inclination to kill assassins <laughs> Okay, so if you want to match him up, match him up with assassins because he will take care of them and ignore their dodge when using first strike against them. So basically, he needs to be attacked. So this only applies to first strike. But again, it's a nice plus to have because it makes, you know, he only has one attack and it's a, it's a sure shot when, his, when he does first strike. He ignores um, dodge and again it, it has an increase of damage so this complements his unique um what do you call this unique uh passive and let's move to the middle skills here the the far most right 
skill is going to be um, a time divider, but it's actually a different name. But what this means is deals 1.7 physical attack to a single target and inflicts sealed. So for two turns on them before the battle, after using the skill, creates a frost prison for one turn, tiles, and surrounding gin. So frost prison is, again, minus three mobility to enemies within two tiles, and escort skills can't be used. This skill is actually nice, guys. And deadly skill, consume three anger to use skill, gain one anger after you deal damage to the target, an additional one anger when first strike was used. So the seal skill is, I think, passives cannot be used. So this skill is a must equip eventually. This one is also a must equip. And um, so one, two, you have two skills. Let us go to this skill first. So this one is going to be dispels two buffs. You can also equip this. Um, but, um, once you have this and this for the first two, uh, you'll go back, you'll have to go back to this one, increased mobility, as I've said before, you'll have to go back to the summary. There's also one other skill that I want you guys to pay attention to. This skill is nice because it has two functions in one skill. This is quite unique. So it has first cold sword, cold sword has armor shred. And the other one, Silver Dragon Sharpness, is going to have slow. So this skill is a must equip. Then once you go back, these two are must equips as well. One and two. So that is a must build for Jin. Um, I won't recommend this unless if you're into really you know debuffing the enemies because this dispels uh, buffs. This one is also underwhelming. The top row, um, also underwhelming. So the the, the must-equip skill for Jin would be one, two, and this one for the summary. The secret of the dragon. So that is how you build Jin. You take you take the bottom row because you need this, and most of them are middle skills and also the skill and the summary. That is how. You're going to be building Jin through his traits. Okay. While you are waiting for this one, this skill is actually good. It dispels two buffs from the target. So take note of that, guys. Those are my suggested build and based on the traits that Jin has. So again, I'm recommending the bottom. As for his leadership, Leadership is quite interesting. It's called the Shadow of Wind and Flowers. So activation condition, he has to have two females with him. So in his team, which is easy, increase the physical attack and physical magic attack, physical defense and magic defense of all allies by 10. Allies deal 10% increased damage when there is an opposite sex character within two tiles of them. So the concept here is that you just have to have them a, on a buddy system where it's male, female, and this takes effect. So what a easy, you know, easy leadership to have. So I'm sure you could create a buddy system there. The other team probably would be three, would be a threesome, and the other two would be a pair. So again... Uh, three for one team, two for one team, and this one would take it back. Again, it has to be of the opposite, opposite sex character to be triggered. So not really a bad leadership. Probably one of the best leaderships that I've seen, which is easy to pull off. Okay, so for rune um, equip, you will be needing, of course, vampire because... Most of his uh, first strike is going to depend on his HP, which should be 50% up. That is why you need a vampire set. And the last one would be a critical rate uh, to give him more uh, a higher critical rate. Because, again, he 
usually has one shot and uh, it's better that he has a higher critical rate for him to deal more damage so these are my recommendations again it doesn't have to be a gladiator just need a critical rate here and but you need the vampire full set of four to trigger this one the four actively attacking after battle recover 20 hp other if you don't want a critical set you would want actually either physical penetration or or physical attack that is actually another option uh physical penetration yep uh we have here we don't have physical attack here on my extras extras uh, you could you could equip another you know another um uh vampire pair but again uh, here so this one uh the holy sword is going to be a physical attack as well but again preferably it should be a crit set Okay, so as far as uh, unique equipment, I got his unique equipment already. So what it does, it gives him additional damage of 8%. Your H if your HP is not less than 80, if attack, convert one buff of, uh, of the pre-battle enemy before, before, the, the, before attacking. And into a random debuff. So he converts a buff of an enemy to a debuff. Nice to have as well. Um, but you will need the attack uh, the attack buff more for this one. But uh, there should be a, a female hero within two compartments of him. So again, it's a funny... <laughs> it's a funny uh, condition to have. Jin needs to have a female companion always okay so please make sure that he has a bodyguard he has uh, probably gabriel so that he can trigger all of his uh, what they call this all of um the qualifiers in some of his buffs okay so again unique equipment it's nice to have but it's not really a must at this point um it but it does really give him a lot of additional damage and conversion from buff to debuff for his enemies. Okay, so for Jin's hero experience, I'd like to give you guys a sample of what he can do. So, this one, um, let's go over his skills first. This is distortion to damage to all enemies within range. You, He is actually has a complete kit. He not he does not necessarily have to be a head-on um, hero, which um, which uh, what do you call this, uh, which Charlotte is, but he can bring a lot to your team. Versatility as well uh, as well, and um, as you can see, once it's their turn, he can do first attack. That is simply his kit. Um, very straightforward. You don't really need to make him as your primary beat stick or your primary with DPS. He could be your secondary DPS. That is why if you guys still have Charlotte, I would suggest she would still be your primary DPS. He he is clearly a disruptor, guys. Not really a primary DPS. So, there you go. So, those are, you know, the ways of using Jin. Um, kind of very straight, not really straightforward in terms of the hack and slash, but um, he can be, uh, you know, he can do a lot of shenanigans for your team. Let's move to my final thoughts and see what I think of him as an overall hero. Okay, so for Jin, um, final thoughts first striker, very good at first strike, so. He doesn't really you don't really need to make to have him on the attack. He can actually ignore dodge. He can absorb incoming incoming attackers. He can do disabling, slow, debuffer, armor shred. He can apply all those debuffs 
while enemies come toward him so take advantage of make sure that you don't use him as a really a bit a beat stick wherein charlotte just at attacks and shreds people for him he's more of a counter a boxer who has counter you know has counters not really good in a head-on you know um slugfest but he will be good as a debuffer damage dealer from far to probably have some debuffs flying around your enemies again he has a different play style as charlotte so you can play them together they can play off each other uh, on their strengths but again he is not your head on dps -er. um that was my first misconception of uh, his skill once they you know w once he was teased but again interesting kit um at this point he can if, if you build him right and really lure people towards him and make him really tanky, then he could be a nice, you know, nice, uh, what do you call this? Nice hero, multiple attacks because of the first strike. But again, you have to make sure that you, he, you built him right, built him tanky so that he can survive multiple strikes and he can dish out multiple first strikes so that is it again very good kit unique in a way i think um but again he needs a lot of uh, he needs a lot of tinkering for him to really excel and you have to get accustomed to his play style so again i am suggesting the bottom row for him because there's a passive there that uh, this passive it's in the bottom row so you'll need that to add to ignore dodge and to increase damage for first strike as well so thank you very much guys for staying this far take care stay safe hopefully this video helped and this is the warden and i'm out of here